Hey everyone, Rich Gasway here. This is a special episode of the Essay Matter show. It's our fourth anniversary. This show is the longest consecutive running, independently operated, safety focused podcast show on the internet. We're closing in on 300,000 downloads of this podcast and our subscriber list just continues growing. If you're new to the show, welcome. If you've been with us for a while, welcome back. If you've been with us from the beginning, wow, I'm so appreciative. Thank you. Let's jump right into this, our fourth anniversary episode. Roll that SA Matters intro. Today's episode is sponsored by Midwest Fire. For more than 20 years, Midwest Fire has been manufacturing high-quality tankers, tanker pumpers, and fire rescue vehicles in the United States and Canada. Keeping firefighters safe while enhancing their capabilities is what they do best. To learn more, go to MidwestFire.com. Everybody look at your hands. Oh, we can dance. Oh, we can dance. Everybody's taking the chance. It's safe to dance. Oh, it's safe to dance. Hey, it's safe to dance. Hey Rich, this is Dave Dotson. Hey, congratulations. Fourth anniversary for your webcast. That is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. And hey, thanks for the opportunity to let me do one of your podcasts. And uh, I think our episode's number 66, right? It, it's still out there online for you guys to look at. Uh, but again, Rich, thank you so much for that opportunity. And congratulations. Thank you, Dave Dotson, for those nice words and your support of my mission. And more importantly, thank you for your friendship over these years. I really appreciate it. In the opening slides, those are a few pictures taken during the SA Matters World Tour last October, where I did 13 programs in Australia, New Zealand, the Netherlands, and Belgium. Welcome to this, the 211th episode of the Situational Awareness Matters show and our fourth anniversary. I am your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to improve situational awareness and decision making for individuals and teams who work in high risk, high consequence, time compressed environments with changing conditions. From the start, the SA Matters mission has always been a simple one, to help you see the bad things coming and time to avoid bad outcomes. This message truly is for anyone who works in a high-risk, high-consequence environment. I'm dedicated to improving your safety and your survival, and I'm here to offer you a message of hope and a message of inspiration and to help you accomplish the most important goal of all, to the go home to the ones who love you. And speaking of sharing the message, today I'm home in my office in St. Paul, Minnesota where I've just returned from doing a five-city SA Matters tour that included stops in Billings, Montana, Indianapolis, Indiana, Sun Valley, Idaho, Madison, Georgia, and Spruce Grove, Alberta. Thank you to the program hosts for your wonderful hospitality and for putting forth the effort to bring this powerful message to your association members and your employees. One of the questions I get asked a lot by readers of my blog and listeners and viewers of this show are, when are you coming to my area or where are you going to be next? I want to attend a program. Great questions and they're really easy answers to find out. There's a link on the homepage of the SA Matters website to all the upcoming events. Just click on the blue box on the right side of the homepage labeled Live Training Dates. In today's feature segment, we're going to celebrate the fourth anniversary of this show, and I'm going to share with you some of the history of how I started this mission to improve situational awareness and high-risk decision-making. In 2007, Situational Awareness Matters was founded, initially to help first responders improve their high-risk decision-making. From a single program delivered at a conference, a mission was launched. And now, we've touched the lives of nearly 200,000 people through our live events, 
through our online academy enrollments, through our newsletter subscribers, our podcast listeners, and followers on our social media channels. This episode shares with you my personal reflections with a spackling of a few messages from some of my friends and professional colleagues. All right, let's jump into our feature segment, the celebration of the fourth anniversary of the SA Matters show. Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Pennington from Jump Seat Training. I'd like to congratulate my mentor, Dr. Richard Gassaway, on over four years of Situational Awareness Matters podcast. Four years, 200 episodes, firefighters, pick up your phone, download that podcast, and make sure you always remember SA Matters. What about your episode, Ryan? Oh, hey, and don't forget my favorite episodes, number 73, where we talk about situational awareness inside hoarding conditions. So make sure you download number 73 first and go do the other hundred and some after that one. Thanks, Ryan Pennington from Jump Seat Radio for your kind words and for your friendship for these more than 20 years. I'm feeling more than a little nostalgic today. So let's go for a stroll down memory lane as I share with you how all of this got started. I joined the fire service right out of high school in 1979 after we had a fire in my house. And I spent my first couple of years really just focusing on learning and having fun. And then something rather unusual or unexpected happened to me after having served only two years in a month. I got promoted to be a lieutenant. And you might wonder, how does somebody with only two years in a month get pro promoted to be a lieutenant? Well, as it would turn out, I missed the meeting where they held the elections for officers. And I got put into a position that I wasn't prepared for. And uh, it scared me. I was afraid that I was going to get someone hurt or killed. And I decided that I was going to quit the fire service because I wasn't having fun anymore. And I called up my mentor, the guy who taught my first firefighting class, and I told him I was going to quit. And he got really mad at me. And he said, why? What happened? And I said, I got promoted to be a lieutenant. And he said, that's awesome. And I said, no, John, it's a tragedy. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to get somebody hurt or killed. And he said, well, don't quit. Just get smart about how to, how to do that right front seat position. And he, and he coached me on, on the classes that I needed to take, company officer classes, uh, strategy and tactics classes. Uh, leadership classes and he gave me a piece of advice that I use for the balance of my whole career he said if you're worried about having firefighters get seriously hurt or killed under your command then start studying near miss and firefighter line of duty death reports contained in those reports are valuable lessons about how not to let firefighters die under your command and boy was he right I uh I learned so much from the information contained in those reports. So as my career progressed, I started in my hometown. I served 10 years as a firefighter, EMT, paramedic, lieutenant, captain, and eventually assistant chief. Then I moved to Ohio, and I took a fire chief's job in a community that borders Akron, Ohio, and I served there for 10 years. Then I moved to Minnesota, where I live now, and I served in the, as a fire chief in a community that borders Minneapolis and St. Paul. In 2004, I decided to pursue a PhD degree in preparation for my retirement from the fire service. As I was doing my research, I had one burning question that I wanted to try to answer that I had been asking myself over and over again in those line of duty death reports that I had been studying for my whole career. And the question wasn't a difficult one, but it was one that I just could never come up with a good answer to. And it was this, while they were working in those high risk, high consequence, time compressed environments, how could they not see the bad things coming? Oh my gosh, there were so many clues and signs and indicators that this incident that they were working at was going to end in a disaster. Why couldn't they see it? It was like they were blind to what was happening right in front of them. So what I did my research in was cognitive neuroscience, trying to understand what happens up here when we're working in high risk high stress, high consequence environments. From that research, I uncovered over a hundred barriers that flaw awareness. More than a hundred different ways it can go wrong. I did my first live event in 2007. I'll never forget it. I was at a conference. I got, I got to my room early. I got all set up 
And uh, when I got my computer all set up with my back to the, to the chairs where the audience would be, I turned around and no one was there. And I thought, oh man, I'm going to get skunked here. No one's going to show up. Maybe they all know all this stuff already. The program was called Decision Making Under Stress. Maybe they know all of this stuff and uh, no one's going to come. And then, and then two people came. This room was uh, set up for like 300 people. And uh, two people came in and uh, you might want to... I think you could guess where they sat in the very last row of these probably 100 rows in the very last row. It's like, hello back there. Can you hear me okay? And uh, I thought, oh, this is going to be a long hour and a half presentation with two people in the room in the back row. And then, uh, and then some more people started coming in and more people coming in. And all of a sudden the room was filling up and I went from the fear of no one's going to show up to the fear of, oh my gosh, what if I fill this room full of people who already know all this stuff already? They're not going to be very happy that I wasted their time. And, uh, and indeed, not only did the room fill up, uh, but it became standing room only along the walls, which was just amazing to me, but it scared me to death because it was really my first big conference presentation on the topic of situational awareness and high risk decision making. And uh, uh, so I did the program and as I was doing the program, I could see the, uh, I could see the angst in the eyes of the attendees. I could see and sense that they didn't know the things that I was sharing with them and they were duly concerned about their safety and their well-being as a result of the barriers to awareness that I was sharing with them. And uh, so it turned out, the program turned out well. When I was done, there was a line of about 20 or 30 people up the center aisle wanting to talk with me. Well, I had to get out of the room to make, because the next speaker was gonna be coming in for their presentation. So I gathered up my computer and I told them I'll meet you out in the hallway. And when I went out in the hallway, none of them had left. They all just kind of gathered around in like a little, circle and and just everyone just had so many good questions and what about this and let me tell you about something that happened to me and and uh it was uh it was an amazing first presentation experience now i have five programs on situational awareness and high risk decision making processes uh, i also do consulting and customized programs for business and industry for example i'm uh, currently under contract for a company in um, northern Canada, Fort McMurray, called Syncrude. Uh, they're a strategic partner for ExxonMobil, and I'm training their oil refinery operators on situational awareness and decision-making processes during periods of high vulnerability, where the operators find, find themselves in a bad situation unexpectedly, how to assess the situation, develop situational awareness, and how to make decisions that will ensure their safety and the safety of others. My research has been featured and referenced in more than 400 publications. I have an online store where there are five books that I've written on the topic, four DVD-based programs, this podcast, now video cast on YouTube that you can listen and watch, a highly acclaimed online academy, 14 courses that where you can take the uh, everything that I would want you to know on your computer, on your time, virtual internet-based training where I'll come to your department and train all your people in your training room with me live over the internet, interactive questions and answers. I have master instructors who are now out training this stuff for me. And uh, these live programs, just the live programs have been taught to more than 65,000 people from the US, Canada, England, Netherlands, Belgium, Hong Kong, China, Australia, and New Zealand. Audiences now include first responders, industrial workers, military personnel, business leaders, medical professionals, utility workers, aviation workers, oil refinery operators, and more. Okay, I want to uh, do something that I don't do very often, and that is to answer some of the personal questions that uh, I have been asked in live program events and in emails from listeners and viewers of this show, live programs, and those connected with me on social media. Okay, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank Rich Gasway for 
something. I'm not really sure what it is. It has something to do with podcast, which what is a podcast? And his message does suck. Oh my God, situational work. What the hell? I mean, suck it up, Buttercup. I mean, are you kidding me? We've got to be situationally aware. Why don't you open your eyes and look around? 360 degrees, that's all you got to do. podcast got hacked. I don't know who that guy is, but whoever he is, I hate that guy. I hate that guy. No, actually, I love that guy. <laughs> That's my buddy, Rick Whitehead from Evansville Fire. All right. Um, so I'm going to share some uh, personal things that uh, questions, answers the personal questions that I've been asked along the way. So first question is, do I have a family? Um, answer is, yes, I do. Um, I'm married to my wife of uh, almost 35 years, and uh, we have four kids. My oldest, Cameron, 26, is a firefighter in Madison, Wisconsin. I have 23-year-old twins, um, Jordan, who is an electrical lineman apprentice in Fort Collins, Colorado. My daughter, Hannah, who works for a medical... Uh, device company and lives here in Minnesota and then my youngest son is uh, Micah he's a senior in high school and soon to be going off to college in the fall next question how many days do you spend on the road a year uh, it varies um, but it ranges in the 220 to 240 days a year time frame so if you're doing uh, some quick math, you can see that I spend probably as much, if not more, time in hotels than I do at home. How many miles do you fly on airplanes each year? Um, this one varies some, uh, but it ranges anywhere from 120,000 to 170,000 miles a year, depending on how much international travel that I might do. Um, some of the tours that I do, they, they get pretty crazy. For example, that tour that I told you about, the world tour last October, I flew 77 hours in a 28-day period. How many frequent flyer miles do you have? Um, more than a million. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that. I can say this. When I, go, when I do get some time off, the last thing I want to do is fly anywhere. What's the hardest part about being on the road? Um, definitely being away from my family and eating meals alone. What's the best part about being on the road? Um, dinner at a firehouse. Absolutely, the camaraderie and the brother and sisterhood shared in the firehouse setting, uh, which I absolutely um, enjoy immensely. And maybe then the second best part is if I get asked to do a ride along, and get to go on calls with the crews when I'm when I'm visiting the firehouse. Um, do you ever add on extra days just to spend some downtime in the towns or cities that you visit? Uh, on occasion I do, but uh, usually I'm getting on to somewhere else to another program or I just want to get home because I'm finishing a long tour. So it's pretty unusual that I would spend uh, much time in, in another or in a, in a city um, beyond the time that I'm there to do the presentations. Uh, next question, do you, do, do you attend any presentations at conferences as a student? Oh yeah, I sure do. Uh, I'm always looking for opportunities to, to be the student. And in fact, when I'm teaching, I'm the student. Trust me, I learn as much if not more than, than the people who are attending my programs do. The learning never ends for me. Uh, next question, how many books do you read a year? 20-ish. Uh, um, I really like to listen to audiobooks. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of a podcast junkie too. So not only do I have my own podcast, but I listen to a lot of different podcasts as well. Um, next question. Oh, wait a minute. I think there's a message coming in from a friend. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeff Bowen from Midwest Fire. I'm here today in the Indiana Convention Center for FDIC 2018. 
Today, I have the extreme pleasure of congratulating my friend, Dr. Rich Gassaway, on the fourth anniversary of this podcast. Situational Awareness Matters and Midwest Fire's missions have been perfectly aligned over the years. His energy and compassion for saving firefighters' lives lines up directly with our mission of saving your lives on the scene. Rich, congratulations on four years and many more, my friend. Thank you to Jeff Bowen from Midwest Fire, and thank you to Sarah Atchison, the president of Midwest Fire, and all of your staff for your amazing work that you do in the service of first responders. If you're in the market for a pumper, a pumper tanker, or a brush truck, check them out at MidwestFire.com. That's MidwestFire.com. All right, back to the questions. So this is one I get asked a lot, especially after a program, is how much do you charge for a program? Um, there are many parameters that go into pricing a program, and it usually requires an interview on the phone for me to gather some additional information. But you can expect that a full day program will run you in the $5,000 to $8,000 range, and that includes all of the travel costs, which can run as much as $2,500 depending on where I'm traveling to and how many days I'm going to be on the ground. Next question. Do you have any way to work with departments that don't have that kind of budget? Uh, absolutely I do. There are many things that a department can do to host a program with limited funds. For example, you can have a program presented by one of my master instructors, which will cost less than having me come. Well, you can partner with other agencies to share the cost of hosting a program. You can get sponsors for your program, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, you can help me locate companion programs on adjoining days and share the travel expenses with another agency. Uh, in lieu of a live event, you can enroll your members or employees in the online academy. Or you could host a live virtual internet-based training program where I'll come to your training tradition via the internet and talk to your folks live and you save the money because you know it's it's not in person uh, well we also have um, uh, training DVDs and uh, books as well so there's lots of options to cover really just about any budget for somebody who would want their members to learn more about situation awareness and high-risk decision-making next question do you do free programs? Um, yeah, I do. But I earn my living and I feed my family by speaking and coaching and consulting. That being said, I do a small number of free programs um, as fundraisers for causes that are special to me every year. Uh, next question. Where's your favorite destination? Home. Home. <laughs> there's there's no there's no second there's no second to that one um next question do your wife and kids ever travel with you um yeah about five to six times a year i'll take one or more of them along with me um do your family members attend your programs um no rarely i think they would consider that a form of punishment uh to have to listen to to me um, do you have employees? Yes, I do. I have a full-time office manager, three part-time office slash research assistants, and I have a virtual assistant. I also have two contracted master instructors, and, uh, and I'm actively looking to grow that cadre as well. Uh, what's the best piece of business advice that, you, that has ever been given to you? Oh, wait a minute. I think we have another message coming in. Stand by. My name is Mike Conley. I'm the fire chief of the Evansville Fire Department. And situational awareness matters. My guys need to return home at the end of each shift, and the key is situational awareness. That means that they will win the game and return home at the end of this shift. Herm Edwards was the coach of the New York Jets when a reporter asked him if his players played to win the game. And his answer was... Hello, we play to win the game. So is the case with Situation Awareness Matters. And here's to Rich Gasway and his podcast celebrating the fourth anniversary. 
and go Steelers. Thank you to Evansville Fire Chief Mike Conley and uh, the little shout out to the Pittsburgh Steelers, which I am a big fan of because I grew up in the Pittsburgh area. Okay, next question. What's the best business advice that anyone has ever given to you? Uh, to grow your business organically with no debt. I was taught that if you can't pay cash for it, then you don't do it or you don't buy it. Uh, my business has always been debt-free from the start, and it will always be debt-free. What's the best piece of personal advice that anyone has ever given to you? Yeah, pretty much the same advice. Live your personal life debt-free. And if you want to buy something, save up and pay cash for it. And if you can't pay cash for it, well, then don't buy it. With the only exception being your home. Have I always adhered to this advice? <laughs> no. Uh, but in all fairness, this advice was given to me much later in life. And I wish it was given to me and I adhered to it much earlier in life, but such was not the case. Now, if I want something, anything, a car, a vacation, a personal toy of some sort, ski do, four-wheeler, I have to save up and pay cash for it. Sure, I think we'd all agree that it would be much easier just to get a loan, but paying interest makes me nauseous. Uh, I, and I've taught my kids this same lesson, which will perhaps be maybe the greatest legacy that I could give to them. Next question, what are your hobbies? Well, I like to play golf. Um, I like camping and I like hiking. Um, do you have any collections? Yes. Um, <laughs> like most first responders, I collect fire department t-shirts and hats. And uh, I also have a rather robust challenge coin collection from coins that have been given to me from those who have attended uh, programs and felt inspired to share with me a challenge coin on the completion of the program. So thanks for everybody who has done that. Uh, what is on your bucket list? Hmm. I have a, I have quite an extensive bucket list, but uh, there are a few things that uh, that are uh, probably near the top. Oh, what? Wait a minute. I think we got one more message coming in here. Stand by. Hey, Rich. Gefeliciteerd met het vier jaar bestaan van je podcast. Um, de message is ontzettend belangrijk geweest, ook voor ons programma Stop en Denk Na in Amsterdam, waar je in oktober geweest bent. De collega's hebben het er nog steeds over, maar nog veel belangrijker. We zien een aantal van de dingen die je ons geleerd hebt, ook terug in andere programma's die we doen over uh, tactisch brand bestrijden, over kijken, zien en begrijpen wat je doet. Het is een ontzettend belangrijk onderdeel van ons hele programma Stop en Denk Na. Dus gefeliciteerd en keep up the good work. Thank you, uh, Bart Van Leeuwen from Amsterdam Fire Brigade. Uh, Bart's a friend of mine. We've uh, uh, met up at several conferences here in the U.S., and then Bart was instrumental in, in helping me to um, get to Amsterdam to present the pro three programs to the Fire Brigade in Amsterdam. I ran into him recently at a conference and uh, asked him to, um, to do a testimonial and uh, I asked him, I, I said, I want it in Dutch because we've got a lot of uh, viewers and listeners in, the, um, in, in Amsterdam and in, in Belgium uh, as well for the, the program that we did in Antwerp. Um, and, and now that I think about it, um, I think I also have a message um, from a friend of mine from uh, Brussels and the fire brigade in Brussels. So let's, let's hear that one too. Hallo Rich, ik heb het genoegen gehad om je cursus Awareness te kunnen volgen bij de brandweer in Antwerpen. Ik heb de, de, deze message duidelijk meegenomen naar ons korps en ik hoop dat we dat in de praktijk ook gaan kunnen uitvoeren. 
Het is heel belangrijk dat we ons bewust zijn van al de gevaren die geschuilen gaan voor de eerste hulpverlener. En ik wil je feliciteren met je vierjarige podcast. En uh, keep up the good work. Um, Will attended my program that I did in, um, in Belgium uh, last October. And I ran into him at a uh, fire conference as well. Same one as Bert Van Leeuwen. And uh, asked him if he would mind um, sharing a message uh, for, the, uh, for the podcast. So thank you, Will, for your good, good nature with that. Um, so what's on the bucket list? Um, I would like to... Uh, say that I have presented on the topic of situation awareness and high-risk decision-making in all 50 states. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm four states short of accomplishing that. The situation awareness message has yet to be shared in New Mexico or Nebraska or Maine or Hawaii. So I hope that sometime before I uh, hang up this, uh, this topic and pass it on to whoever is going to be carrying the torch after I'm done, that I get the chance to present in those four states. The, uh, the next uh, bucket list item for me is, uh, is going to be accomplished in the fall of 2019. I and a couple of friends are going to walk 500 miles on a pilgrimage called the Camino de Santiago. And we're going to do that next uh, September into early October. And the trek will be about 16 miles a day uh, for 32 days and it starts in France and goes all the way um, to the western tip of the north of Spain um, to the town of uh, Santiago de Compostela and it, it is there that the um, there is a shrine in memorial to Saint James the first of Jesus's disciples to be martyred. Um, he was beheaded. And so we're going to make this pilgrimage in the fall of 2019 and that will come off the bucket list as well. Uh, final question, how many more years are you going to do this? Uh, I've been doing it now full time uh, since 2009. So uh, about nine years now with that travel schedule and such that we've talked about earlier. So I don't want to go on forever. Um, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to be 80 years old on the road and and presenting. I got other things I want to get on to in life. I mean, nothing against those who choose to do that, but there are other things that I'd like to to try and accomplish uh, in the time that I have left. Uh, my youngest son will graduate from high. I'm sorry, from college in uh, to, uh, 2022 and uh, I hope that by that time uh, I will attract someone who will want to uh, take this business and uh, carry it on and maybe even take it to the next level which would be uh, really cool. Um, all right, I have a favor to ask of you the listeners and viewers of this show the primary reason I created this show was to provide a platform for those who've experienced near-miss events to share their stories. The experiences that have been shared with me on this show have been nothing short of amazing and extremely educational. I just recorded one this morning uh, with a guy who went to a, air quotes, routine call. Um, one that he thought that he could, that was literally thinking they could put out with a cup of water. It was that small of a fire. And by the time... Um, by the time this event was over, there was, there was a, a very significant uh, near-miss event, including an explosion, and uh, that'll be an episode uh, upcoming. Uh, I'd like to get more lessons like this shared with the listeners and the viewers of the show, but I need your help to do so. If you've experienced or witnessed a near-miss event and would like to have a platform to share your lessons learned with others, 
contact me by visiting the essaymatters.com website and clicking on the Contact Us tab on the top of the homepage. Think about it for a moment. The lessons learned from your near-miss event could save someone else's life. That's really, really powerful. And what a wonderful gift it would be. If you want to share your experiences, contact me. Okay, as I always do, I want to take a moment to thank the companies and organizations and agencies and departments that have hosted recent Situation Awareness Matters Tour Stop events. I do this to show my appreciation to those who put forth the time and the effort to organize, advertise, and fund great training for their teams on this important topic. Recent tour stops have included the Bureau of Land Management Leadership Symposium in Billings, Montana, the International Fire Department Instructors Conference in Indianapolis, Indiana, the Idaho Fire Chiefs Association Conference in Sun Valley, Idaho, Georgia Pacific Corporation, where I did uh, training for um, their, their factory workers in Madison, Georgia and the Spruce Grove Fire Department in Spruce Grove, Alberta. If you're interested in attending an upcoming SA Matters Tour Stop event, on May 10th, I will be in Charleston, West Virginia for the West Virginia Public Safety Expo. May 11th, uh, Chicago, Illinois for the Paramedical Services Association of Illinois. May 19th in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. May 22 in St. Francis, Minnesota. May 24, Tyson's Corner, Virginia for the I Women Conference. May 26th, I will be keynoting the New Brunswick Fire Chiefs Conference in Fredericton, New Brunswick. May 29, June 4, 5, 11, and 14, I will be back in St. Francis, Minnesota doing training and consulting for a company there called Temperature Specialists. And on June 13th, I will be at Fire Rescue Med in Henderson, Nevada. Then, I'm taking a month off. <laughs> I often say on my social media, the SA Matters Tour never rests. Well, I'm going to rest. I'm taking a whole month off. And during that time, I'm going to celebrate the graduation of my son from high school, Micah. Yay, Micah. Last one to graduate. Get him through college, get him out of the house, be empty, empty nesters, and we'll see where it goes from there. I'm also taking my annual trip to the Boundary Waters Wilderness Canoe area in northern Minnesota. Those who know me well know I go there every summer for a week of rest and relaxation and recharging my batteries. Oh, and uh, I'm getting a colonoscopy too while I'm off. Woohoo! Oh, what a pain in the butt that's going to be. Uh, is that oversharing? Um, no, seriously. If you're over 15, get scoped. It could save your life. Seriously. Okay. If you're interested in seeing the locations of all the upcoming Situation Awareness Matters Tour Stop events, head over to the SA Matters website. Click on the blue box that I mentioned earlier. On the right side of the home page, it says live training dates. Just know that the dates are always changing, so check back often. If you're interested in hosting a Situation Awareness Matters Tour Stop event, go to the SA Matters website, click on the Contact Us tab. There are over 80 programs already scheduled in 2018 and already scheduling some programs in 2019. So just a heads up, 2018 is filling up faster than I had ever expected. Um, and uh, so in, in part that is uh, due to uh, 60 days or two months of 2018, um, I'll be teaching and consulting for ExxonMobil and the United States Navy. So that's, that's a big chunk. That's two full months out of 2018. The uh, limited availability has caused me to start booking programs in 2019 sooner than I expected as well, which means 2019's inventory of dates are going to become scarce too. That's a great problem for me to have, knowing that situational awareness topic is gaining that kind of popularity. But it's also a challenge because I want to be able to accommodate the hosts who are looking to book a program on a specific date. The more flexible your dates are, the more likely I will be able to accommodate your request. If you want to host a program and save some money, consider hosting a companion program. 
Those are programs held on adjoining days to other programs. So if you want to host a program and you see on my calendar that I'm going to be within a few hours of where you're located, contact me about hosting a companion program. You can save as much as 20% off the program cost. Just reach out to me through the website. I have great staff. They'll make the entire process easy for you. I promise you. How can we get connected and uh, be more involved in the mission of SA Matters? There are several ways that you can do that. Um, there are over 75,000 people connected with me through the newsletter, membership, podcast subscriptions, YouTube subscriptions, followers on the social media feeds of Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Through these channels, we share ideas about how to improve situational awareness, how to make better decisions under stress, and how to help your team members become critical thinkers and resilient problem solvers. All right, let's start with the newsletter. The newsletter is completely free. The newsletter will come to you by email once a month, and the newsletter contains featured content from over 400 articles on the SA Matters blog and from the more than 200 podcast episodes on SA Matters Radio Show and more than 300 videos on the SA Matters TV YouTube channel. And occasionally in the newsletter, I will offer the subscribers of the newsletter discounts on books, videos, virtual training, online academy, even the live events. So those specials are exclusively for the newsletter subscribers. The newsletter truly is the best way for us to stay in touch with each other. There are two ways you can subscribe to the newsletter. First, if you're in the U.S. and you have a smartphone, you can text SA Matters to 22828. That's the letter S as in Sam, the letter A as in Adam, and the word matters. All together, SA Matters to 22828. Be sure to watch your autocorrect because uh, some phones want to change the word SA Matters to something else. If you do it right, you'll get a text message back right away on your phone to enter your email address. And once you do that, you're signed up for the newsletter. It's that simple. Now, I know some of you don't have smartphones and you don't like to do that texting thing. And some of our listeners and viewers are based outside the United States. So in that case, you just swing by the essaymatters.com website and click on the red box on the right side of the homepage labeled free membership. If you want to subscribe to the podcast, you can do that by searching for SA Matters Radio on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or Google Play. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel by searching SA Matters TV, all one word, SA Matters TV, on YouTube. You can also follow the SA Matters page on Facebook. On Twitter, you can follow at Rich Gasway on Twitter. And you can search for Rich Gasway on LinkedIn. Hi, my name is Brad Davidson. I'm an industrial firefighter. I uh, was on uh, one of Rich's uh, episodes, uh, number 170, I believe, about the situational awareness and how it probably saved my life and maybe others. Uh, Rich's uh, situational awareness is very important in the fire service. It's an important message, and I believe everybody should be taking advantage of that sharing their knowledge and their experiences uh, going forward so we can prevent others uh, their line of duty deaths and go forward. And thanks Rich for your for your anniversary. We appreciate your service. Thank you Brad Davidson for being a guest on the podcast and sharing your near miss experience and thank you for supporting my mission. Well that's it. Episode 211 is complete. Thank you to our awesome sponsor, Midwest Fire. Thank you to all the companies, agencies, and organizations that have hosted Situation Awareness Matters programs. Thank you to all the organizations that have hosted the live, virtual, internet-based training events. Thank you to the more than 2,000 students who are attending or have graduated from the SA Matters Online Academy. And more importantly, thank you, the listeners and the viewers of this show, for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I really appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. Be safe out there, and may the peace of the Lord and strong situation awareness be with you always.
You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters radio show with Dr. Richard B. Gassaway. If you are interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit samatters.com. If you are interested in booking Dr. Gassaway for an upcoming event, visit his personal website at richgassaway.com.